Hello, welcome to Historic Mill Creek Discovery Park. My name is Caleb Cavett and I'll be your interpreter today. Now this is our reconstruction of Robert Campbell's sawmill. This mill is based off of existing mills in, that, in the 1790s, so we believe Robert Campbell would be at least familiar with this design and this setup. How this mill works is water will be coming from behind our dam, down the sluiceway, and it will fill up our crib down below the floorboards. That crib holds just shy of 1,800 gallons of water, and we need all of that water to build up enough pressure to start the mill. Once, the, once that crib is filled, I will spin my flywheel behind me, and that will open up a small gate in the bottom of that crib and release that water under a lot of pressure onto the flutter wheel. That flutter wheel is what will look like a big riverboat paddle wheel underneath, and that is what's powering the mill. Connected to the flutter wheel is a pole arm called the pitman's arm. And the pitman's arm has the same job as a saw pitman and causes my saw blade to move up and down. But that's all it does is move up and down. Robert Campbell would need a way to feed his lumber through the saw. To do that, he would harness the extra energy of his saw blade and use that energy to move the sleigh. That was done using the ratchet assembly system up top. How this ratchet assembly system works is as my saw blade moves up and down, this beam up top is going to teeter up and down. That will cause this beam it's connected to, to rock or ratchet back and forth. And that pushes this pole arm forward and backwards. This forward motion, when put into gear, lands onto my rag wheel and pushes my rag wheel forward. Connected to the rag wheel is an axle, and that axle has teeth on it that line up to the teeth here on my sleigh. So as that rag wheel and axle moves, my sleigh follows. Now when Robert Campbell was cutting his boards, he wouldn't cut all the way to the very end of the log. He would stop with a few inches left, reverse his sleigh, so that that blade ends back up in the foot block. He then would move that log over and start a new board. Once that log was finished, he would drag it out of the mill and take his raft shackles and shackle together the ends of all the logs. Once they're chained together, a team of draft animals can then drag them down to the beach where they could be either hooked up to the back of a ship or loaded onto a ship and ferried across to the island. Now once on the island and at their individual work sites, a worker can take a handsaw and saw loose all the boards. The boards will fall free and you're left with a discarded piece of lumber called a stub shot. These stubs were generally destroyed. They were good for firewood. However, in the 1970s, the state park learned not all of Robert Campbell's stub shots had been destroyed. In the 1970s, the state park was renovating Mission House and Mission Church over on Mackinac Island, which was built using Campbell's mill. And when our carpenters peeled open the walls, we found stub shots like these tucked up in the walls, filling up all the nooks and crannies. Now, we're not exactly sure what those, or those stub shots were doing there. Most likely, though, they were being used as a form of insulation. How, whatever reason they were there, we were very glad we found them because we were able to dissect those stubs and learned a lot about Campbell's saw blade. We learned he was using an iron blade, not a steel blade. Now, steel was available at the time, but it was very expensive, and it was most likely difficult to repair. But a softer iron blade could be repaired by Campbell in his own workshop. We also learned that as that saw stroked up and down, that sleigh moved forward at about a third of an inch with every stroke. We can measure the skips between those saw marks, and we were able to use that to get that distancing to help us reconstruct our gearing. We learned also that that kerf, the teeth of the saw, were not straight up and down on top of each other. They overlapped each other quite a bit, so that he cut a much larger area than his saw blade actually was. That helps reduce the friction on the back of the blade, so he's not binding as often or producing as much heat. Now, since Campbell is not cutting all the way to the very end of the log, he needs a reverse mechanism. For that, there is a second wheel down below called the tub wheel. The tub wheel spins counterclockwise and is shaped much like an old wash tub. It is connected to a vertical axle that leads to the lantern gear. And the lantern gear 
looks much like an old-time railroad lantern. And when it's engaged, it lines up to the wooden teeth on the rag wheel. Now Campbell, when he was cutting his lumber, he could only cut it in the springtime. That's the only time of the year there's enough water to be able to continuously run his mill all day. In the summertime, he'd most likely be tending to his farm in the fall harvesting, and in the wintertime, bringing those trees out of the woods and chopping them up and bringing them to his mill to be prepared for that winter snow melt or that spring snow melt. Campbell, when he could operate all day, he could cut between 100 and 150 boards a day. Now that's not a lot by today's time standards, but that was 10 times faster than that pit saw that it's replacing, which could cut between 10 and 12 boards a day. That's a quick look at Robert Campbell's sawmill. We hope that you'll visit us soon for a more in-depth look here at Historic Mill Creek Discovery Park.